All right, our guest today on No Nonsense Music Marketing is Michael Walker of Modern Musician. Michael Walker and his band Paradise Fears went from living out of their cars to selling 24,000 albums in six months and reaching number two on the iTunes alternative charts using pure grassroots techniques. He's amassed over 17 million views on YouTube and millions on Spotify as well. Uh, working with award-winning producers and touring internationally to perform for hundreds of thousands of fans worldwide. Today, he and his company take clients through a three-tier system to provide artists with the tools necessary to create a lasting career in the music industry. Michael, we appreciate you being a guest on No Nonsense Music Marketing. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk. Absolutely. So, Let's let's dive into a little bit of what I just talked about um, so people get more of a backdrop on your story. So can you tell us like the specifics on what those grassroots techniques were that you guys used to sell those 24,000 albums in six months? Like what did you all specifically do? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So uh, really, when I started Modern Musician about three years ago, you know, I was looking to transition from touring full time to uh, really coaching and helping other other artists with their careers. Um, I found a, a few mentors who basically helped me to reflect and be like, you know, what are the most valuable things that you did and what could you actually share? And, you know, it was about 10 years of touring full time. So there's a lot of different things that we had done. But when I kind of looked back, there's there's a few like shining examples of things that that really moved the needle or made the biggest impact on, on our career. And probably the biggest one for our band and for me personally was this idea um, that we call tour hacking. And that was the really the main thing that went, helped us go from living in our van, living in our cars to touring with some of our favorite bands. And so the idea in a nutshell was that there were six of us in the band. And you know, prior to this, we had been working our butts off to you know book shows. And I remember booking our first tour and being really excited. And then realizing pretty quickly that you can't just book the shows, you actually have to figure out how to get people to come out to the shows. And, you know, at the time, like, I remember playing shows for just the bartender in the back of the room and lugging our gear up like three flights of stairs to play for hardly anyone. And, you know, literally living in our van, sleeping in Walmart parking lots. I remember going into Walmart, getting a big stack of flour tortillas and a big jar of peanut butter. And that was like breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. It was peanut Man. butter tortillas. And I, and I know that a lot of musicians can like relate with that. Like they're like, yeah, like yeah, that's part of the grind at the beginning. But um, for us, probably the biggest thing that, that took us from that place to, to being able to tour with our favorite bands was this idea of tour hacking. And so there were six of us in the band and we split up into groups of two. So there's three different groups. And basically we realized that some of our favorite bands like All Time Low, Blink-182, Mayday Parade, kind of this like pop punk, pop rock scene, um, they played shows where thousands of people would come out and uh, sometimes for days in advance would be waiting in line outside the show. And so we thought, you know, what if we actually walk up to those people waiting in line and introduce ourselves and share some clips of our songs and just try to build relationships with, with those fans who are going out to the shows. And so that's what we did. We, we split up into groups of two. We had three different groups following different tours around the country for months at a time. And I remember I was a super shy, awkward kid, so I, it, it didn't come naturally to me at all walking up to strangers and like introducing myself. I remember like shaking and stuttering as, as I walked up to people. But what we found was just that that worked really well. And in about six months, we had sold 24,000 CDs um, doing that directly talking to fans and lines. And so, and because of that, uh, one of the bands that we were tour hacking on was called All Time Low. And you know, they had millions of fans. They were one of our favorite bands of all time. And they heard about what we were doing on their tour. And they gave us the opportunity to open for them on their next tour. And so that was really like our, our big break, I think, was going on tour with All Time Low. And that snowballed into a, a career where we got to meet and tour with a lot of our favorite bands. And when I reflect and I really think about tour hacking, um, I, I think that there's a couple of reasons for, for me that I think it was one of the most valuable activities that we ever did as a band and for me personally. Um, one, I think that 
because I was a shy, awkward kid, um, it really helped me get out of my comfort zone, kind of overcome the fear of rejection and actually connect with the right people. You know, because there's a difference between someone who just casually listens to a song or someone who clicks like on a page on Facebook versus someone who actually spends money to go out to a show and is like waiting in line for the show. <laughs> you know, like those are the right people to talk to. <laughs> those are the people who are the most likely to really connect and care about your music. And, you know, that's what we found is like we got a lot of validation from connecting personally with those people. And you can bet when we actually got the opportunity to tour with All Time Low, we are still out front uh, before the show, meeting as many people as possible, connecting. And and uh, I remember one case, we almost, like we had the wrong set list time. So I remember like two minutes before we went on stage, uh, our tour manager ran. I was like, dude, like you're going on stage in two minutes. <laughs> he had to, like run out from talking and, and jump on stage. And the people that we met in line, you can bet that, you know, normally for, for someone coming out to a show, they may or may not really care about the opening band. Um, but if we met them in line beforehand, you can bet that they're paying attention to us on stage. And so, you know, I, I think that that was like the biggest needle mover for us early on was really that grass, like connecting with people, person, the right people who actually spend money, go out to shows who care. And um, so that, that was the story of, of tour hacking. Nice. So how did you make that connection? You said you started to open for um, some of these bands. Uh, all time low. So how did that connection happen from the tour hacking to getting actually booked to open for them? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So <laughs> it's a good lesson too, I think for um, in a lot of cases, uh, it's easy to look at bands that are at that level and feel like they're almost like inaccessible or like untouchable. But the truth is that there's real people, you know, yeah. they're real people and they're people that you can reach out to, you can connect with, you can connect with their people. Um, but one example of that for us was, you know, and, and I've heard some people before who valid the kind of question is, you know, how do the bands feel about you going out and doing this? Like, do they feel like you're like hijacking their, their fans or, um, and for us, I mean, every single band that we did it with, we never had any issues except for one band. Um, I mean, we did this for like 12 plus bands. And the one band that was weird about it um, ended up like they broke up as a band like a month later and they were the mm. smallest band out of all of them. So I think that they actually had some like scarcity mindset kind of issues. Um, but, you know, what what we did was you know, we, we didn't hide what we were doing. Like we, we wanted to connect with the bands. It wasn't like we were trying to do something shady. Like we were really coming out like coming from a place of wanting to provide value and connect with people and not just trying to like take, take. Um, but, but what we did was at every single show, I remember giving, giving someone a CD and after the show, the guys from the band would um, come out and, and take pictures and sign autographs. And so um, I would always give someone a CD and say, Hey, like if you're staying after the show, would you mind giving them a CD and letting them know what, what we're doing here? Um, I would have loved to have done it myself every, but, um, unfortunately, you know, they, they had a tour bus and they had a, a bus driver. And a lot of these shows were like a long drive away that were like overnight drives. So we wouldn't always be able to stay for the shows. We'd have to like kind of pack up and leave after the show started. Um, but every single night, you know, we would give someone a CD and we would, and we would ask them to, to give it to Alex, their lead singer. Um, and you know, I remember finally in Nashville, there was one show where there was like a double header and because they had sold it out so they're playing back to back those nights so we actually had the opportunity to stay and to go on all the shows and yeah, i remember um after the show they came out and they had like a barrier and he was taking pictures and signing autographs and, and so i remember walking up to him and handing him a cd and sort of excitedly explaining like what we were doing and and uh, I remember he looked at it and he smiled and he says like, you know what? Um, we actually have like 12 of these CDs in our van right now or in our bus and we listen to it and we like it and we really admire the hustle of what you guys are doing, but you know, we don't need another one of these. You can actually, you know, you can sell this. Um, and that was kind of like a, like, oh, duh, like moment. Like, of course, like, it's not like he was just some, you know, um, untouchable person that you, know, you can never, like, of course he has like, you know, 12 CDs from people who gave him the CDs. And so um, that was just one way for us to kind of get on their radar, I think, is one, one really powerful concept in general. I think it's the idea of like planting the seed, getting on people's radar, even early on if like you know, you're just starting out, there is something really powerful about just you know, planting the seed or just getting people's radar. If you keep showing up consistently, then they're going to start to notice you. And so that was kind of how we built the initial connection so they kind of knew who we were. 
And um, then we reached out to their manager via email and, um, and we basically asked if we could open for them on one of the next tours. And that's when they gave us the opportunity to open, open for them. Got you. So the consistency as well as planting the seed uh, played a huge part in that. And that's something we definitely teach people too, is that if somebody's getting pitched something all the time, like you do have to stand out a little bit. So you guys being persistent, that is definitely a lesson for, for people to take home. Um, I wanted to, to get into more of a uh, transition to what you're doing today a little bit. So you made that jump from uh, opening for, for bands and doing the tour hacking to now focusing on uh, modern musician. Uh, so where did that jump happen? Like, how did it happen? Right. Yep. So uh, about three years ago, when I found I was going to be a dad, um, at the time I was touring uh, full time and I was gone <laughs> most of the year. And it definitely wasn't like a lifestyle conducive to starting a family or being a good you know, father, being being president um, as much as I, I would have liked to with my with my family. And we weren't quite at the point where like it made sense to fly them out to like shows all the time. You were still like we had done a couple of tours in, in a bus, but we were still um, not at the point where it would make sense to bring like a family on on the road. And so um, at that point, um, it was really kind of a it was a big transition point for me. And it was, it was one of the most challenging points that I was at because I was like, what am I going to do now? Um, do I need to you know, get a quote unquote real job? Do I need to go back to college? I'd never gone to college. We had just started touring with the band right out of high school. And we had done that for 10 years. So it's not like I really had a ton of, you know, uh, uh, experience or, or um, things to like, you know, get a job with. And uh, luckily, I stumbled upon a few mentors in the online uh, business and coaching and education world who basically taught um, personal brands how to create an online business and how to create a coaching program and, and to create courses. And so um, at, that was the point where I started to sort of transition kind of like a, a basketball player who becomes a coach and starts like coaching other basketball players. And uh, part of that process for me was sort of reflecting and, and thinking, you know, what are the most valuable things that I could actually offer that um, that would be valuable for, for musicians specifically, because that was really where I had the most experience. And so at the beginning, you know, I started with coaching, doing one-on-one -on -one coaching with a few clients, a few artists, like one-on-one. -on -one. And I remember thinking, okay, well, tour hacking was probably the like the thing that made the biggest impact on me personally and on our band, I wonder if it still works because, you know, I mean, even when we were tour hacking back in the day, people weren't really listening to CDs anymore. They were up on iTunes and listening digitally. Um, and so I was like, you know, do people still buy CDs at shows. And so one of the first bands that, that I taught it to, there's two guys in the band and they went out and they went tour hacking and in a single month they made $11,000. And so I was like, awesome, <laughs> like that it still works great. Everyone, there's this cool idea called tour hacking, go out and do it. I actually created a, a free workshop called the tour hacking workshop. And I started running ads to this workshop. And you know, that's how we got our first 10,000 know, subscribers from Modern Musician. And we had a lot of people go through it. Who felt, Thank you, this is so valuable. Um, I love the idea of tour hacking. I love the story, uh, but is there any way I can that I can do this without going and meeting strangers in lines for shows or traveling across the country, you know, living in my car, like while I'm doing this. And uh, so that was based on my experience that like the people who were willing to actually go out and meet strangers and go tour hacking, they had great results, but the, like 99% of people, um, it wasn't really uh, the right path for them or they're wondering, is there a way to do this online that's more accessible so I don't have to leave my family or day job in the meantime? And so that's what really birthed this, uh, this idea of virtual tour hacking. And virtual tour hacking is probably what we teach. It's like 99% of our methodology at this point. And it really, it takes the same foundation, the same principles as tour hacking, which in a nutshell, I think that what really, the principles of tour hacking that made it work effectively, I think were the grassroots nature of focusing on connection and the conversations um, with the right people. Like, I think that that was really what made it, um, what made it work was that it was really that, that direct personal interaction. And it was with people who are pre-qualified. It was people who are like the right people to talk to. 
And so the idea with virtual tour hacking is that it's uh, essentially the same, uh, the same foundations, but done through messenger campaigns on Facebook and Instagram, done in, in the inbox. And what we found was you know, we tested a lot of different types of ads, different campaigns, and the ones that were the most engaging um, were the ones where there was the call to action was to actually send a message to the artist, and then they started having conversations with the fans. And it was also great because it gave, I don't know, a sense of c connection or like validation, a real like um, engagement, I think, like because as humans, I think that a lot of the way that we connect with people is, is through conversations going back and forth. And it's also a great way to get qualitative feedback and to be able to segment uh, based on the conversations uh, who are the people who are the, the quote unquote right fit, who are the people who actually go out to shows, who actually spend money on bands versus the people who don't, who are just casual listeners who don't really care as much. And then being able to create lookalike audiences based on those people who are a lot more engaged um, so that um, you can actually start to improve the targeting. And that that really turned into something. I mean, I was like, I, I was the weird kid in high school that liked math. So a lot of this digital marketing world with, with building funnels and creating lookalike audiences and having like metrics trackers, uh, really kind of lights lights me up in in like the geek the geek in me like really enjoys um, the analytics and split testing and you know one of the the best things about virtual tour hacking versus tour hacking is that um, you can actually build uh, an automated flow through something called ManyChat and Janus AI and Dialog Flow that is sort of like an AI version of you that can have these conversations. Uh, in a way that's scalable. Because the biggest issue that we run into pretty early on, usually within the first few weeks, is that new, the artists just can't keep up with the amount of messages that are coming in. And so it's like a good problem to have, but they just it's hard to scale when you have a limited amount of time and you can't just spend all of your time you know, interacting or just like responding to, to messages. So really a, a big core part of the methodology now with virtual tour hacking is after the first couple of weeks, really like being able to connect with people personally through those, those conversations, building a messenger flow that automatically sends people through the sequence and it filters out the people who aren't necessarily the right fit, the people who, aren't, who don't really care that much or more casual from the people who are actually uh, a lot more engaged or actually are the people who are a lot more likely to come out to your shows and then is able to create lookalike audiences based on those people and invite them to a private community where you can connect more personally with them, usually through doing things like live streams and doing things where you, where you have a chance to, um, to really get to know each other. Yeah, that's, that's really useful. I think um, a lot of people haven't tried out Messenger campaigns yet. So you don't have to give us all the, the nuggets, but what are some of the conversation starters? Because I think that would be a question a lot of people have, like, what are some things that you you try to start the conversation with? So if like you're targeting people who like a certain band or something, like, how are you going to reel in that, that the starting uh, flow of everything? Yeah, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so at the time of recording this, um, we've done like a, what we call a messenger masterclass a couple of times and we, we did it live and we did it for free and it led into basically like a lower, um, a lower ticket, like a $47 offer to launch a messenger funnel. And for us, this was the first time that we'd ever offered, um, anything that was like standalone aside from like personal coaching and working with, with our team, uh, for a high ticket investment. So, um, there may or may not be some like a free resource called the Messenger Masterclass that, um, as you're listening or watching this, that you could probably Google like Modern Musician Messenger Masterclass. They'll kind of give you a full breakdown of how to launch it. But to answer your question, um, the system that we use for the Messenger campaigns and what how we start those conversations is really similar to the way that we started the conversations with tour hacking. You know, with tour hacking, we would walk up to people and I would ask if they're waiting in line for, for all time low. And like, of course, they're waiting in line for all time low. They have like an all time low t-shirt and they're like sitting there in line. But that was a good initial question, you know, just to sort of, it was for relevancy. I think like I really kind of let them know that we were about to start um, talking about all time low. And 
from there, I would usually really quickly introduce myself. Hey, what's going on? Uh, my name is Michael. I play in a band called Paradise Fears, and basically we're huge fans of All Time Low, and at some point we'd like to go on tour with them. And so we thought you know, one of the smartest things we could do would be to connect with people like you who are you know, who are going to their shows and just share some clips of our songs. So if you're interested, I have some of our music here. It's 30 second clips, um, but I should probably warn you that most people who listen to it enjoy it so much that they start to cry and faint. And so, you know, if you need if you need any tissues, I've got a backpack full of tissues. I've got really fast reflexes, so if you do faint, like I'll make sure you don't hit your head on the ground. Yeah, that was that was like my my little comedic bit. Like I, that was like my uh, eight years later, I can still recite that like about perfectly, just from like from mm -hmm. repeated groove use of doing that. So same thing virtually. So like the campaigns that we run with messenger campaigns are usually um, the tendency is that. Like artists, like you, you want you'll want to record like a five minute video where you're describing your entire story and everything about your music. But like the what we've seen getting the best results easily is is really bring it down to like 15 seconds tops. And it's this video that basically says, "Hey, uh, my name's Michael. I play in a band called Paradise Fears, and I think if you're a fan of All Time Low, you might like our music too. So click on the send message button, and I'll send you a song. And I'll look forward to connecting more there. And then when people click on the button it starts a conversation in their inbox. And one thing that's really exciting is that for a while, um, it was only Facebook that allowed you to, to uh, connect with the AI chat bot. So it was like, if you did it on Instagram, you could still do it, but um, you wouldn't be able to scale it as effectively because it was just like the, um, the direct organic conversations. Instagram just unlocked um, a connection with many chats. So you can actually do it through Instagram as well, which is really cool. Um, but from there, yeah, people would click on the button and then, uh, the first, like the, the default message that gets sent out that we usually use is it says, Hey, um, we're trying to listen to, to my new song. And then when they respond, they say, yes, that's technically when, um, the, the inbox opens up and you can actually respond to them. So that's when you can send the song and then just follow up with them and have a conversation based on it. That is, uh, that was a nugget there. I hope people were taking notes. Uh, like I said, so if you, if Michael's given us that for free, uh, that useful information, I'm sure you guys go through a lot more in the workshops and the courses. So yeah, man, we really, really appreciate that. Um, so just last couple questions. What, what are some of the results that you guys see for your clients with the, the digital virtual hacking? I mean, there's, you know, if, we're, if we're looking at like some of the extraordinary people, um, some of them are getting like one cent per message, three cents per message, which is like ridiculous. Like if you could, we have a 73 year old um, lady who she's, she's like getting uh, three cents per message right now. She's literally getting thousands of messages. And it, sometimes it makes me laugh thinking about her just like sitting at her computer. If she didn't have the automation that's that was like able to scale it, just trying to respond to all these people. Um, so in the past two years, our artists have done over a million dollars in revenue. Uh, we had a client last year whose album hit number one on iTunes as a singer songwriter. And, um, and, and really at this point it's, it's a really dialed in system in terms of like in the first month of working together, we launched the entire thing. We have it set up. We have good reporting metrics tracking so that people can start to split test and, and implement it. Um, but I would say that like the core, probably the biggest transformation, the core thing that I think really um, like the value add that people get is from just the, there's people who come in at different places, right? I mean, if someone comes in they already have, uh, an engaged audience where they have already have like a sustainable business. For example, there's one uh, one client that we're working with who came in, um, he's a piano instrumentalist and he was already doing $11,000 per month with his funnel. So he had already had proof of concept validation, like and he was just looking to grow. Um, and then in three months he had done $212,000 with, with his funnel. And so, um, you know, there's people like that who kind of come in who are like, it's like pouring gasoline on a fire. But I would say that the majority of people aren't coming in at that point they're like they're coming in from a point where they've invested a lot of time and energy and money into recording their songs but they have basically no idea how to actually promote it or how to actually reach the right people who are going to resonate with it and how to build those relationships and turn it into a sustainable business stream and so for people who are at that point i think that really like the main transformation is getting 
proof of concept, getting validation really quickly because they're actually having these conversations. And, and maybe in a lot of cases for the first time ever, they're actually seeing, um, they're seeing people responding to their music, like new people daily who are like, this is amazing. Like this song really touched me, this song really connected with me. And I think that there's something, like all of us as, as musicians, there's this this uh, calling, there's this this need to express ourselves. And there, there is like a, a feeling of vulnerability or like sharing like a piece of yourself. And if you, you know, if all you have is your friends and family or existing people that you've shared it with and you've, never really had that, you, maybe you've tried some things, you haven't really um, seen much response yet, then there's this like nagging voice in the head, I think that's sort of like, am I, am I really good enough? Uh, can I really do this? Am I deceiving myself? Am I not as good as I think that I am? And so I think that directly having those conversations and actually getting that real like qualitative feedback from people who are like, this is amazing. Like this song is like, was really connecting with me. I think it's just something that's super motivating for them and it lets them know that they're on the right track um, so they can continue to build their their community. Appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. That makes that makes a ton of sense. Uh, the personal touch of it all. Uh, it, it's, it, it's still automation, right? But as much as we can be personal, um, you know, I'm sure there's some points in there where the artists still hop in. Maybe they'll answer a couple of questions or, you know, they're talking to somebody. So uh, combining the automation with the personal is really what's going to be um, helpful for a lot of artists. So, yeah. Michael, any anything else that you want to tell the people uh, where where can they find you? Yeah. Yep. So if you Google Modern Musician or go to modern-musician.com, you can find us there. Um, there's a, so depending on when you're listening to this, um, you may or may not be able to find that, that Messenger Masterclass, which is like a free training that, that walks through step-by-step, step how do you launch your Messenger funnel? Um, and then we also have a, uh, a webinar that right now is still free. It's about like a two hour long webinar. And it's really like we break down, um, the whole system and, and the economics of like, what, what do you need to aim for? What targets, what do you need to offer in order to get to your first $5,000 per month with your music? And so that webinar is a great resource, I think. It's just a free webinar. We're actually right now working on building it and turning it into a $47 uh, masterclass that and we're gonna add maybe like half an hour to an hour of content and, and add a few more resources to it. Um, so, um, if it's still free, you'll be able to find that at the website um, under modernmusician.com, modern-musician.com. Otherwise, there might be a $47 masterclass that will really be like a beefed up version of that as well. That, that's a good resource for you. Um, also, one thing that I wanted to uh, to speak to, just because you just brought up a really good um, question, a really good point around the hybrid uh, of automation and organic, right? Because I think that that's one big concern and one big question mark for us as humans right now, I think, especially with the rise of AI and automation, that this is just like a question um, around the globe as humans that we're starting to ask and we're gonna keep asking even more and more as artificial intelligence gets more and more intelligent is around um, this idea of like of leveraging automation, but also having the, the right roots, like being rooted in, in authenticity or, or being genuine, especially for artists. Um, I think that this is such a core, uh, a core dynamic is like, you know, as artists, like that's really cool. Like your role is to, to express yourself and to be authentic and to, you know, to create artwork. So connecting that with this automation is a really interesting um, place where, where those two things meet. And so the way that, that I always look at it is that the automation, you never want to completely replace your personal connection with your fans with automation. The automation is, is just a tool that allows you to scale and to reach more people. And the basically just like the point through which you do that personal connection is going to change as you grow. At the beginning, when you know you don't necessarily have a big audience, then you probably want to be doing your darndest to like to respond personally to every single person and connecting with every single person as much as possible until you physically can't. <laughs> and at that point, it's like now you need to start scaling. And so you probably, you still want to connect with people personally as much as possible, but it's just the the quality of the people that you're connecting with personally 
um, are going to be people who are more qualified. So it's like those people who have actually joined your private community. So now you're doing, doing live streams and you're connecting with them personally. You're having conversations with people. You know, Patreon, like maybe you have uh, a $10 tier and at a certain point, those are the people that you can really connect with personally. Uh, just because you don't have enough time to connect with everyone as much as you would like to, you're still serving and still trying to connect with everyone as much as possible. But the, the people um, who really care the most, the people who get the most value from that personal connection are the ones that you continue um, connecting with personally. Um, so yeah, man. So I just wanted, I just wanted to share that, that last, that last little, um, nugget and yeah, I appreciate you having me, dude. This is, this is fun. I love talking about this stuff and really good, really good questions and happy to, um, happy to share as much as I can. Absolutely. Michael, it's been a pleasure. We appreciate having you on here and sharing your knowledge on no nonsense music marketing. Um, everybody who's listening, definitely go check out Michael's course, uh, modern musician, uh, get the free workshop, get a free webinar. Um, there's literally nothing stopping you besides just the, the time commitment. So it's, if it's free, go get the resource anyway, uh, see if it's right for you invest in the course. If it's something that you can see helping grow your music career and music business, only caveat we're going to add, cause you mentioned Patreon and my audience has heard me talk about it. So I, I have to add the caveat, uh, the the creator coin we see being a lot bigger than patreon in the future so if i didn't say that they'd be in my ear talking about you said this about patreon then you had this <laughs> on your podcast so uh we can talk about that another time it's it's exciting stuff but it's the same concept same concept of uh people still supporting you because they want to uh, the creator coin just adds a little extra benefit so that crypto and the nft world and all that stuff so um yeah it's been an absolute pleasure cool thanks man yeah and i definitely want to double down on that too that um the conversations that we've had about that are super cool so i definitely recommend everyone checks that out also i'm excited i just personally um invested in uh, what you guys offer with spotify promotion so i've just had a new single that came out so i'm looking forward to you know connecting more with with you and what you're doing nathaniel awesome man we appreciate that support we appreciate it and um yeah, you guys go check out Michael's stuff.